You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Pablo. Hello, Pablo. My name is Rob. Roberto. Great. Robert. Nice to meet you. And I am happy to be with all of you and very happy that you are with us. We appreciate it very much for this episode 965. And uh, I'm curious as to how many people are having the issue that our caller has shared with us today. Seems to be more prevalent now that DJI has kind of switched the uh, airspace um, uh, okay. to Geo 2.0. I still have yet to do that on my particular bird uh, just because I know exactly what I'm going to get out of Geo 1. So... Um, and you're not having any issues. No. You're, there's nothing you can't do that you want to do. Mm, yep. All that kind of stuff. All right. Yep, totally. So that being said, just so everyone knows, if you're a Drone U member, there is a video that we have. It's not super high quality, but it gets you right to the point. No, no BS, exactly step by step what you need to do to unlock red zones um, very quickly. But this also goes to show why other people are quickly buying up another drone from a newer company and it's actually uh pretty exciting Hmm. so we'll but we'll be getting into that and so much more which our show today is brought to you by our friends and family of the drone you community thank you so much for the support thank you for staying in the community thank you for your feedback and thank you for just everything. I, I've been hearing a lot about how people are really enjoying the new business course, Rob. And I know, you know, for $47 a month, you get access to 33 classes, including a very lengthy, now 102 videos long business course. And there's a lot of information in there. There is. And, and there's more to come in time. I mean, we're always going to be um, enhancing that, improving it, updating it because that's sort of uh, it's a foundational course that we want to help people with. So excited about that. It's a lot of fun and uh, it's one of the one of the fun things that I get to do here. Yeah, or at least participate in. I think it's a lot of fun. Very, very true. Very. Fun. And the new mapping class should be on the site now, right? As of right now, yeah, I yeah. actually just remembered though that Tim may still need me to put the exercises up on the site so that you can follow along. Um, so anyway, check that out but uh let's go ahead and play today's question hey guys uh, having a hell of a time getting uh, airspace unlocked with uh, dji getting rank approvals and everything's good to go with the facility maps but uh, for some reason the uh, unlocking of the airspace at dji independently is locking on their equipment is making it almost impossible to get airspace unlocked after having gone through all the length processes and communicating with the tower. I uh, just wanted to find out if you have some good to know uh, how to's on making this work. I've followed all of their documentation and submitted all the requirements that they've uh, put out there. I still don't have anything unlocked in the last two, three weeks. So please uh, give me some advice. Thank you for uh, everything you do. Love your show. Love what you guys have been doing over the years. Really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Rod. Appreciate the question. AskDroneU.com for your questions. Get those in. We would uh, love to hear from you for sure. Definitely. Unlocking issues. Have you have you experienced that issue? I have experienced this issue. Um, when DOD announced the no-fly zones that DJI implemented, um, there was an issue with, uh, where was it? Colorado Springs? Our unlocking video actually showcases how we unlock that. And we got the unlock in under an hour. Hmm. So um, it wasn't a big deal. But I do just want to say for everyone out there, if you're just taking pictures or video and you're running into this a lot, there's another drone out there that I'm going to be doing a review on very soon. I've had it for about a month now, but I haven't had the chance to do the review. Um, And it's the Autel Evo drone. In fact, I should probably just pause the show, go to the car, go grab it and, and show it to you guys. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, um, we found out that the Department of the Interior was buying a lot of these little drones, and it made me wonder why. Well, I now know why. All right, hold this remote here, Rob. 
That remote is one key point that I'm about to make really quick. But this is the drone. It's called the Autel Evo. And I mean, it looks just like a Mavic. It's a little bit heavier. Gives a little stability. It sits a little higher on the ground so you don't get the sensors all dirty. Um, and as you can see, if you are watching the show on YouTube, you can see this drone. Um, very, very common design. Looks like the Mavic. The gimbal is a little bit different because it has a roll gimbal built inside of the lens. But I love this drone for one simple reason. It does not tell me where I can and cannot fly. Hmm. In fact, it will let me fly wherever I want to fly it. Um, and It's a good idea. I like that. Yeah, I do too. I love that remote. It's actually very, very intuitive. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. It's just, it's robust. Now, the other beautiful thing about that remote, Rob, is that that remote does not require an internet login. Hmm. So if I'm in an area and my app crashes for whatever reason, I don't have to be connected to the internet to keep flying the damn drone. Very interesting. I have run into that problem with DJI, and it is so annoying. I've literally had to drive like 65 miles in one direction just to get a cellular signal to log into the app and then go back out to the ranch and keep filming. Very interesting. Now, you will never have that problem with an Autel Evo. The reason why is that the app is just simply, go ahead and turn on the remote. The app is just simply, you turn it on and the software is built into the remote. It kind of reminds me of the old, like early 2000s, whenever you would buy something robotic and literally the app would be proprietary to the manufacturer mm -hmm. and it wouldn't be internet connected. It would just be like an app that literally controls the drone. So it's trying to connect. But look, the app is already open. It's already displaying battery information. I can, I can go ahead and turn it on. It's going to be a little bit loud. But So the other thing is the roll on the gimbal, oh, well, maybe it'll do it here in a minute, is actually built into the camera. Hmm. So when I turn it on... How's the camera? I actually was really impressed, dude. I'm not going to lie. I couldn't figure out how to shoot raw, though, so I still have to figure that out. But here, so I turn the bird on. And look at this. Doo -doo -doo -doo. <laughs> so now, yeah, see how oh, the roll yeah. is inside of the lens. Check that That's out. That's really cool. Ready to go. So, yeah. And so look. 14 minutes left. There is absolutely no, like, hey, I need to log in with a unique identifier and be connected to the internet where potentially my internet data could be transmitted to places I don't want it transmitted to. Not with this drone. That's interesting how the back blades are lower than the front blades. It's just like the Mavic. The Mavic mm -hmm. is that, or is it just because it sits like this though? Or no, they're, they're I mean the, the Mavic way? is pretty much this almost the exact same way. This is just a little bit Seems more different. And yeah, I will say this thing is loud. It is not quiet. Like it is, it is very loud. So, um, in fact, it was so loud when I was flying it at Disney's private island. I was a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> the, the no drone zone? Uh, no, I was not in a no drone zone. Okay. Uh, and there was no airport there. There used to be an airport there. But anyway, I love this. You can also plug in your phone and you have a lot more capability inside the app, like taking your pictures, you know, how you want to take your pictures and all that. Um, it was actually very fast. I liked it. I wish I had a little bit more flexibility in how to control the speed. But it had attitude mode, so I was able to get great video. And some of my best videos that I got, there you go, um, that I got in the Bahamas were with this drone. Hmm. And, like, literally my two favorite drones right now, after a Phantom, is a Mavic 2 Enterprise and this drone. Very cool. I, there's got to be a lot of people out there that have probably fallen over in their chairs. That I just said that I like something other than DJI. Yes. Whoa! <laughs> yes. Whoa. So but get the, back up and join us this again. This is the first one, though, that I've really been like, wow, this is like, okay, let me put it to you in, in reference. What I'm always worried about with a new drone is that I cannot go somewhere and not, how do I say this? I'm always worried about going somewhere and not being familiar with the drone to a point where a crash will happen or an error will occur and I will be unable to fix that because I don't know how the drone works. I don't know about the flight modes. I don't know about the mm. emergency power down or CSC move that we talk about. Right. But the thing is, is that Autel's controllability on the drone was extremely similar to DJI. So much so that I had no problem 
I think these extend out even more. Um, so, so that I had no problem literally going to a brand new location I had never been to before, pulled this drone out, took off, no GPS issues, hmm. did a compass cow, you know, flew around. Everything was great on this thing. Intuitive. And it was intuitive. It was like I was flying DJI, except I didn't have to log in to anything. I didn't have to have an internet connection for the drone to work. You know, I could literally still fly this without a phone, which is really cool. Yeah. Ever since the Phantom 4, DJI implemented that if you don't have a phone or a tablet plugged in, you can only fly like 150 meters. Unless you take off and fly 500 meters out before the GBS compass realizes where it is, and then you totally bunk the whole system. Just take off and go real fast? Mm-hmm. I got lots of nuances like that. <laughs> 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 Whenever we're training public safety, they're like, is there a workaround? I'm like, well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, because, look, we, we need these things to work, right? Yeah, and, especially in that case. Yeah, and, you know, DJI has openly come out and said, like, you know, for our more experienced professional pilots, we're going to have, a, you know, a master unlock. Like, Bill has a master unlock. He can fly that thing wherever he wants to. And that's awesome. But there are also 70,000 other pilots out there that know what they're doing, that have the rights to fly in the areas that they, they want, and they're going to do it one way or another. Yeah. So this has actually quickly become a drone that I'm just like, um, we're adding this into our Don't Crash course. That's how much I like it. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. And how much is that? I don't think it's... Oh, here we go. 1200 1500 Okay. If this is $9.99, you're buying lunch. Okay. All right. Here we go. Autel Evo. Oh, man. Does that mean you're buying lunch? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I know. <laughs> but look, this has some crappy landing pad in it and an SD card that's not fast enough. So that's funny. Um, so there's a lot of prices, but uh, it's around nine ninety nine. <laughs> yeah, it's in that little thousand to twelve hundred range, depending on if this is sold by Eve. Look, sold by Autel nine ninety nine. Lunch, there you on, go. lunch is on Rob. All on that right, bombshell, on I think that's going to do it for us today. Did we answer his question? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, he was how, at, so we really didn't. Basically, what we said is, forget that drone. Go buy one of these, right? Well, no. I mean, if he's a drone, you remember, we have a whole video on how to unlock because of, we're, it, would be, it would be silly for us to sit here and be like, you need to go onto DJI's website into the unlock. Fair enough. You need to write exactly this Are you in saying the first that's what I box. Sound like? Maybe. Maybe. I don't, no, think, I don't I think I don't think so. Anyways, I got gotcha. you. Okay. So become a member. Look, I also I'm also trying to educate, right? He asked a question. He's asking for a very specific answer and response, but because so many people listen to this show and they're constantly thinking about amortization, they own a business, what's the next drone equipment that I need, or I know taxes are going to be rough on me this year, I'd rather buy a drone and write it off than pay taxes. Yeah. Which is a legitimate thing to do. Sure. Um, hey, here you go. Yeah, it's a great option. No, I wasn't saying that that wasn't good information. I just wasn't sure if we specifically answered the question. But I understand it's all on the site. If you're that interested, then you can check it out there. Yeah, it's just going to be an interesting title for the show. What are you going to write? How to unlock DJI Red Zone or buy a new drone, question mark. <laughs> <Right. laughs> or buy a new Autel Evo. Yeah, or is it better to learn how to unlock or just buy a new drone? There you go. Ooh, so I like, like that, that one. I like that one. On that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. Thank you for watching or listening. Please, please do us a favor. Leave us a review. Thanks, ma'am. Or ma'am. Ma'am. Or man. Whichever. Whichever. <laughs>